Hey everybody, it is 7 o'clock, it is Wednesday, which means it is time for Bible study. I pray that everyone's had a good week so far, I pray that everyone's having a good hump day, and uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together, to gather, and to study your Holy Word, Lord. You are amazing, you are perfect, and, and, and you have a way of, of bringing us from the depths of hell that we put ourselves in, Lord, and putting us in, in righteous relationship with you, Lord. Allow us to, to search that relationship, Lord. Allow us to appreciate the things that we have, Lord. Allow us to understand that, that you want us to be different. We have options, we have choices, we can be of the world, or we can be of you, Lord. Let us make the right decision and allow us to reap the rewards that you have prepared for us. Lord, we know that there is times that this is difficult. We know that this is not the easy road. However, the, 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 the love, the joy, the peace that comes with the relationship with you is unmistakable, undeniable, and irresistible. Let us submit ourselves to you, let us be obedient, and let us be the disciples that you want us to be. Bless this time that we have together, allow us to grow in your holy word, and allow us to understand the gifts that you want us to receive. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen. So, uh, announcements for the week ahead, uh, tomorrow... We have adult education at the church from 5 o'clock uh, until about 7.30. Tomorrow is math. Um, it's awesome. We have uh, actually one person from the church who is going to be taking their uh, exam on the 8th of October. So let's be in prayer for them. Um, these are free classes, folks. I mean, this is an opportunity to, uh, to receive the, the, an education. Um, to, to get uh, a high school diploma and to, to move forward to, to whatever it is that you are being moved to do. Um, so if this is something that you wanted to accomplish, something that you wanted to do, here it is. It's available to, like the Lord said, uh, when he uh, parted the Red Sea, as we've, we've talked about many times, step on dry land, not let me carry you over dry land. You've got to step and you've got to move into that blessing. Um, on Sunday, we have our regular service at 11 o'clock. Then, uh, then on, on uh, Tuesday, we have Adult Education English. Again, same thing. Uh, come join us for that. That's free of charge. Um, and after that, uh, we have a 12-step gratitude meeting that meets at the church. Uh, it is open to anyone who is any, in any 12-step program. And uh, it is a, an opportunity and a time in which we uh, speak about what God has done for us and how uh, he is working us through the steps and uh, what amazing things uh, God is doing in our lives. So uh, we've got that ahead. Uh, I want to thank everyone who came out and uh, helped us uh, feed over at, uh, over at uh, West Main Christian. Uh, it was a awesome experience awesome experience to uh, spend some time with our homeless brothers and sisters uh, we will be doing that every fourth Sunday so uh, go ahead and mark that on your calendars the fourth Sunday of every month uh, we will be doing that uh, this next time we won't be cooking out uh, the menu item will be a surprise so don't even ask cheesehead um, other than that I can't think of any announcements offhand oh yes this weekend this weekend on uh, Sunday, we will be doing a uh, joint service. It's still at 11 o'clock uh, with Antioch, and afterwards there will be a meal. And uh, all of y'all are invited, and of course we would love for y'all to, to attend. Um, it's an opportunity not only to receive God's Word, but also to fellowship uh, with your brothers and sisters uh, from By His Blood and uh your brothers and sisters from Antioch. So uh, come join us, and uh, the food is going to be amazing. I tell you, if you want good food, you come to a Baptist meal, and it's delicious. So um, come join us. We would love to have you and love to, uh, to partake 
this week. Uh, we are in Leviticus chapter 20. Now, I don't know how long this Bible study is going to take. I, again, a lot of it depends on... Um, let me uh, open up the Bible study on my phone. That way I can receive questions. Craig, good job. Thank you for sharing it. That way I don't have to go hunt it like I usually do. It's already... Uh, it's already been sent. So awesome, awesome. And uh, I'm going to start it up right here so that I can. Wow, that was cool. I, uh, I looked like I just appeared in the chair. So that was, that was good. But anyway, last week we, we talked about, um, we talked about Holiness. We talked about loving your neighbor as yourself. Um, the week before, we had talked about uh, unlawful sexual relations, um, the laws against eating blood, uh, how to sacrifice properly. Um, so, you know, we've talked about all of these things, and the Lord said, you know, don't do these things. Don't do these things because I want you to be set apart. I want you to be different. I want you to be holy. I want you to be my people. God, we we look through this this. Gosh, we look through Exodus and we look through Leviticus. We look, we look all the way through Scripture. We look through the life of Jesus Christ. And what do we see? We see God saying, I'm here. I love you. I want you to be my people. Just come and follow me. Be willing to set these things aside because they're not going to make you happy. The things that I have for you are good. The things that I have for you are going to give you joy, which is a, 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 a state of being. What I have is not temporary. What I have is eternal. I'm going to show you. I, I've shown you so many times. Come, come be with me. Be my people and I will be your God. He has, he has said it over and over and over again. And the reason that I said I don't know how long this Bible study is going to be is because he is talking about it again. This time he is, he is talking about what will happen if, if the people commit some of these things. So what we see a lot of times in Leviticus is we see the Lord speak to Moses and he gives specific instructions to the people to be carried out in specific ways. We've talked about this over and over again. But then, a chapter or two later, after he has given, you know, certain things, a certain way to do things, and everything else, then there will be a chapter in which he gives the consequence for doing those things, and this is one of those chapters. Um, starting with verse 1, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the people of Israel, Anyone of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel... So he's not just saying to Israel, like the, 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 the natives of Israel, but he's saying anyone who is in Israel or anyone who is sojourning with Israel. So as the people come into this land, this land that they have been promised, the land that is promised of milk and honey, he is saying these things are not only for you, but these are for the strangers who sojourn there as well. So a couple of things there. So what God is saying is God is saying this is for you, Israel, and this is for the strangers who sojourn there. So these laws are binding for everybody. There is no separate law for separate people. This is a concept that, that we have to understand as hum human beings if we truly want order and if we truly want equality in the world. We have to understand that there are laws that are binding to all people. Laws do not differ because of the pigmentation of our skin, the amount of money that we have, the status that we have in society. Um, there is nothing that, that allows us to violate the laws of God. The laws of God are the laws of God. And um, so he's saying, not only you, but the people who sojourn there. Now, God is fully aware that some of those people who are sojourning, some of those strangers are going to be grafted into Israel because 
through the Israelites and through their purity, through their holiness, and through the people seeing how they worship, seeing the God that they worship, and seeing the results of the worship, they are going to see the undeniable attributes of God, and they are going to become believers. So they are bound by that law as so. But then also there's going to be those who are blind and those who do not believe, but these laws are binding to them as well. So these right here are laws of holiness, laws that set Israel apart from the rest of the world. And he says to the people of Israel and the strangers who sojourn there, who gives any of his children to Moloch, shall be surely put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So now we see a crime, a black and white crime. So if you take your child and you sacrifice it to this false god of the Ammonites, you are murdering your child. You are, you are, you are giving up an innocent life because there is no reason for you to give this child to a false god. You will be put to death and you will surely be stoned. So there is a crime and there is a punishment. It is put forth by God. Therefore, that is how it is to be carried out. Then, in verse 3, it says, I myself will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he has given one of his children to Moloch to make my sanctuary unclean and to profane my holy name. Now, we, we, we think of sanctuary, we think that he is, the child is being brought into the temple or the child is being brought into the place of worship. And in some instances, it's the truth because we see in Ezekiel, we see in one of the visions from God that the, that the priest are actually worshiping false gods in the temple. So this is something that is not completely uh, um, illogical. This is something that actually happened. But what, we have to think, what is God's sanctuary? We're in God's creation, and we're in a place where we are to be worshiping God at all times. God's sanctuary is anywhere. So he, we are profaning his creation by doing this. And profaning his holy name. So we are we are we are making a mockery of his creation. We are we are we are we are making a mockery of his name because we are seeking false gods who do not have power and do not have the ability to do the things that God does, yet we're willing to turn our back on God. And make these sacrifices to false gods because that's what the people around us do. Now we may not we may not sacrifice children to Moloch, but we do a lot of things that the people around us do because that's what the people do, even though we know that it's against God's will. This is not the only example of idolatry in, 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 in Scripture, and it's definitely not the only example of idolatry in the world that we live in today. But he says some, some very important things here. He says, I myself will set my face against that man and cut him off from among his people. So God is saying, if this person makes these sacrifices to this false god, I'm cutting him off from my people. Why? Because God did not want his people to be infected with these false religions. Now, I, I am one who believes that, uh, that our First Amendment right is precious. And uh, I believe that the right for people to practice and worship uh, the way that they want to. I, I believe that that is a right that is guaranteed to us through the United States Constitution, and I believe it is a right that is inalienable. I believe that there is no reason that we should ever violate that right. However, that being said, we as God's people, we as people of the one true God, we must recognize him and not adapt ourselves to their beliefs simply because they have the right to believe it. Yeah, they have the right to believe it, and they have the right to worship. 
But we don't have to adapt our lives and adapt uh, our beliefs to them. And that goes not only for, for, for religions, but that goes for lifestyles. That goes for all kinds of things. We talked about the sanctity of marriage and how it's been violated over and over and over again in many different ways. And the things that it has led to, the, 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 the homes without fathers, the generations that have been left behind without a, a, a male role model, um, just all kinds of, of ways that we have violated these very things. God does not want that in his kingdom. God wants his people to be set apart and, and, and holy. We don't adapt to the world. We adapt to God. We don't take God and bend him and shape him to, to fit the belief system that we want to have. We don't rape and pillage scripture and put pieces and parts in different, different order in different ways so that we can do whatever we want to and try to justify it with God's word. Or we cannot adapt and say, you know what? God is God. Whether it be the God of the Bible, the God of, of the Quran, the, the, you know, whether it be the God of Buddhism, whether it be the God of Hinduism, whatever it may be, with that, no. God is God, and we don't adapt, and we don't, we don't add to him. He doesn't need to be added to, and we, don't all, and we don't worship falsely. We need to be very careful. I mean, little things that we do, and we're going to get to some of this here in a moment. It says in the, verse 4, it says, And if the people of the land do it all, close their eyes to that man when he goes, gives one of his children to Moloch, and does not put him to death. Then I will set my face against that man, against his clan, and I will cut them off among their people, him and all who follow him, in whoring after Molech. God's justice extends to those who don't carry out justice. Notice that God is saying that he is going to, in God's eyes, the person who ignores the sin and allows the sin to be carried out and does not carry out the penalty for the sin is just as guilty as the party who committed the sin. Why is that? To use modern examples... I mean, if you see someone committing adultery on their wife, maybe you don't go to the wife directly, but you, you confront that person and you bring to their attention how they are violating the will of God so that they can seek counseling, so that they can, they can repair the marriage that they have, so that they can do as God would have them do, or you just turn a blind eye, let them do it, and then you watch their, then you watch them self destruct. The ignoring of sin is a sin in and of itself. Yet in society, we've come up with all different terms: narc, snitch, uh, rat, whatever you want to make call them. But if we do not point out sin and we do not try to counsel and try to direct the person that we see sinning back in the way of the Lord, what are we doing? And this, again, is another theme that goes throughout Scripture. Again, I'll use Ezekiel as the example, you know. God tells Ezekiel, you know, if this man sins, yet you warned him about him, it's on his head. And I'm paraphrasing. But if this man sins and you didn't tell him about it, it's on your head as well. So let's keep that in mind as we, we see what's going on around us. And let's understand that we are required. It's our responsibility to point out these sins. And people don't like it. People, people don't like it at all. People will whine about it. People will cry about it. People will try to hide it. People will deny it. People will uh, try to, to, to make themselves the victim. But the truth of the matter is sin is sin. And if we do not point it out, then we have a problem as well. 
Verse 6, if a person turns to mediums and necromancers, pouring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut them off from among his people. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. The Lord is the one that will direct our steps. The Lord is the one that will, will put us on our way. Yet, we want to combine, again, see, a lot of this comes with, uh, with, with uh, a synchronization of, of faiths and religion. There were a lot of these people that, that believed in, 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 in the Lord. A lot of people that, that claimed the Lord, yet they would still go to mediums. And seek out their advice. I, I read uh, Bill O'Reilly's Killing Reagan. I found it very interesting that, yes, the Reagans attended church, but uh, Nancy Reagan actually sought the advice of a psychic the entire time that Ronald Reagan was in office. That's not being faithful to the Lord. You know, something as small and as, as silly as, as, as believing your horoscopes or, or, or thinking that your horoscopes determine your future or, or that your, your zodiac sign really has a bearing on your life, um, those are all things that are against God. And we have to be very aware of that because that is the false religion of astrology. It says, keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. This is important for us to remember because it is, Lord, it is the Lord that sets us apart. It is, it is the Lord that makes us holy. We get into Ephesians chapter 2, where Paul writes and tells us that we are saved by, by faith. We are saved by grace through faith which is not any work of our own, so that no man may boast. It is God that does these things. It is not us that does these things. So many times we want to rely on ourselves, and we believe that we set ourselves apart. We've done good. We have made ourselves holy because of all these things that we did. But we left God out of it, and then it's a big mess, and we get mad at God and everything else. No, we have to rely on God through the whole situation. We can't blame God for our ignorance and for our disobedience. Verse 9 reads, For anyone who curses his father or his mother, they shall surely be put to death. He is cursed. His father and his mother, his blood shall be upon him. The family unit is important to God, as is the structure of the family unit. So we need to, to be aware that all of these things deal with God's people being different in idolatry. God wants his people set apart, and he wants them to, to, to be as he wants them to be. Think back to your life and think about the times that you were disobedient to your mother and to your father. Were those good times in your life? Did those times end up good? No. No, they didn't. And God's telling us these things because he wants us to not suffer. He wants us to receive what is good. But the only way that we can receive what is good is through obedience of the things that he has instructed us to do. And the things that we do that are out of line with God's will come with very real consequences. Now, the, 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 the laws here, these, these laws, these are... These are, these are laws against idolatry, and these are civil laws because these are the things that they were to do in Israel. And we have civil laws of our own, but the laws of, the, of God supersede the laws of the land. However, the thing that you will see is you will see that if you obey God's law, you obey God's way, you will not find yourself in jail. Now, you may not agree with some of the laws that are on the books, but these are not laws that will put you in jail 
For example, what, a law that is at odds with God's word is the law of, that, that allows same-sex marriage. It is at odds with God's word. However, as God's people, our disagreeing with that does not violate the law because we have the right to marry a woman if we're a man and a man if we're a woman. We have the right to marry the opposite sex. We are not in violation of the law. The law does not say that we have to marry someone of the same sex. It merely says that the same sex marriage is allowed in the United States. So we are not in violation by staying within God's law. However, the law of the land is more lenient. So we, we are not to, to give in and to accept that and say, okay, well, I'm going to allow this in my household. But at the same time, we, we have to understand that the, 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 the consequence of the sins, they, they come from the Lord. They don't come from us. Verse 10 says, if a man gets a, commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. The destroying of someone's home and the destroying of someone's family was, was worth death. 11. If a man lies with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. We saw these laws revealed back two chapters ago. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Now, something that I want to see is, I mean, we see the word abomination, but we also see the word perversion. We also see uncovering father's nakedness. God is not putting any of these sins above the other. These sins are all sins, okay? These sins are all sins. The sin of adultery is the same as the sin of homosexuality and is the same as uh, of, of the sin of, of what well, that would be considered a, a, an offshoot of incest, perversion. Those are all perversions and those are all things that hold the same weight in God's eyes. Those are all sexual sins. And not one is greater than the other. So we not need to understand here at the church, as the church, we have to look at adultery. We have to look at, at, at the other perversions um, through the same scope. An adulterer, someone cheats on their wife, they're allowed back in the church. Yet someone practices homosexuality, we close the doors and shut them out. Oh, no. No, they, they're the ones that we should be allowing them in the church. We should be come in and receive God's word because we're not going to change anyone. The Holy Spirit will, but we're not. But it doesn't mean that we don't show the love of Christ to them. It doesn't mean that we don't we don't share and care for those 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 people and 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 let them know that, that God loves them just like you would forgive the adulterer and say Jesus loves you you do the same thing to the other people we have become sin rankers sin has no rank in God's eyes sin is sin it is the black and white of the bible that makes it so beautiful If a man takes a woman and her mother also, it is depravity. He and they shall be burned with fire, that they may be no depravity among you. If a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and lies with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. So we see that all of these, these sexual sins... These are things that God does not want in the land. Now, why does God not want them in the land? Again, they're associated with two things. They're associated with holiness, being set apart, because the other cultures around them saw nothing wrong with this. The other cultures around them practice these things openly and freely. Even into, even into the, the, the Roman Empire, 
even into, especially uh, during the, the, the time of the Greeks, during the Hellenistic period, um, it was not uncommon as a spoil of war for a warrior, a man who, though he may have a wife, was oftentimes given a young boy as a spoil of war. See, these are the things that the cultures around God's people were doing, and God was like, you don't want any part of this. This is not going to bring you joy, and it's not going to bring you peace. And then the other thing is, a lot of these sexual acts, a lot of these sexual um, perversions were associated with the worshiping of false gods. Therefore, they were linked and yoked to idolatry. So we see that God wants his people to be holy. He wants them to be set apart and different. And he doesn't want them to do the things that the people do to worship false gods. Because false gods cannot bring the things that God can bring. Starting on verse 17 here, it says, If a man takes his sister, a daughter of his father, and a daughter of his mother, and sees her nakedness, and she sees his nakedness, it is a disgrace. Thou should be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness, and he shall bear his inequity. If a man lies with a woman during her menstrual period and uncovers his nakedness, he has made naked her fountain, and she has uncovered the fountain of her blood. Both of them shall be cut off from among their people. Again, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or your father's sister, for it is to make naked one's relative that shall bear their inequity. If a man lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. Being childless during this time was a big deal. This was this, if, if, if you were a woman and you did not have children, you were useless. And if you were a man and you could not produce children during this time, you were looked down upon. That's why we see um, the women of Scripture, why we see Sarah so upset while being barren. We see Leah and Rachel. Um, you know, Rachel was barren and Leah was, was having children and, and Rachel thought she was cursed, so the Lord blessed her. Um, we see Hannah. We see all, all of these people that, that were considered to be um, barren. Elizabeth, Baptist, John the Baptist, um, his mother. We see these women blessed by the Lord, and it truly was a blessing. Now, in verse 22, God explains why all of these things have to be. See, we've talked about it already, but now God is going to talk about it. And he is going to say to the people exactly why they need to do these things. And he's going to, he says, starting in verse 22, You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my rules and do them, that the land where I'm bringing you to live may not vomit you out. So God is giving them a, a, a land. The Abrahamic covenant, we, we, we've read about it, the seed and the land. And, and we see the seed because there are many, many, many people traveling here. And they're going into the land in which God has promised. And God is saying, look, you go into this land, you do these things, it will be peaceful. You will have joy. You will be, you'll have all of your needs met because I'm bringing you into where I promised you. And my promises are there. However, if you don't follow me, things are going to go askew and the land is going to vomit you out. And we see this in the exile. We see them exiled for 70 years and we see that Israel doesn't even become a nation again until 1948. Some 2,000 years later. So, so these are all very, very real commandments and consequences that we can see were carried out throughout history. See, Scripture is supported by history. Scripture is supported by the truth. 
It's amazing when we look at biblical prophecy. When we look at what happens to societies when they live outside of God's will. When we look at emperors of, of Rome like uh, Caligula and we, we see how depraved they are and how, how crazy, uh, how mad they are driven. Um, it, it's just, it's amazing how much history supports these truths that are being spoken by the Lord. And in verse 23 it says, And you shall not walk in the customs of the nation that I'm driving you out, that I'm driving out before you. So he's driving out the Canaanites, he's driving out the Amorites, he's driving out the Ammonites, he's driving out uh, the Jebusites, he's driving out the Perizzites, he's driving out all of these peoples so that Israel will have a place. But he's saying, I don't want you to do what they did. I am removing them so that you may be pure. We'll see later on in, uh, in Joshua that, uh, that they don't do a good job of uh, following the Lord's commandments as far as the removal of these people, but that's a different story for a different time. Um, and it says, But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God. So this is the culmination of God's promise. It's being brought out right before them, yet they will still turn a blind eye to the Lord, just as we do. It says, who has separated you from the peoples. So again, we see that God is the source of separation, not, not anything else, not our works, not our great deeds. God is the source of separation. And in verse 25, it says, You shall therefore separate the clean beast from the unclean, and the clean bird from the clean, or the unclean bird from the clean. You shall not make yourselves detestable by beast or by bird or by anything of which uh, the ground crawls. I have set apart for you to be held unclean. You shall be holy to me. So God is saying, I've told you what's clean. I've told you what's unclean. You are to separate yourself from what's unclean because I want you clean. It says, you shall be holy to me. So you shall be set apart to me. And in verse 26, he continues by saying, for I am the Lord, I am holy, and have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. So God is not removing these people so it's convenient to the Israelites, so that it's easy for them to move into the land. God is moving these people because he wants his people separate. He wants his people different. He wants his people set apart. He wants his people sanctified. He wants his people to be recognizable. He wants his people to, to be true disciples. And in verse 27, it says, A man or woman who is a medium or a necromander, necromancer, I'm sorry, shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned, and their blood shall be upon them. And again, he says, Those who seek things outside of me, they shall be put to death, because there is nothing that you need outside of me. God is the answer. God is the way. God is the purpose. And God is the one that allows us to be holy. So, you know, that chapter right there, it is a, it is a follow-up to the chapters that we have read. Um, are there any questions or comments or concerns or complaints? Um, does anyone... Hey, Pastor Matt. Anything that we want to talk about, let me know. All right, well, prayer requests, be in prayer for Gary, always be in prayer for Gary and his family. Um, Gary's had a couple of rough days, but uh, but he's doing well, he's, he's strong. Uh, it's not uncommon to have rough days when you're going through chemo, so... Um, keep him in your prayers. Uh, be in prayer for uh, for for Deborah Rourke. Um, be in prayer for uh, uh, Pam Sexton. Be in prayer for Daniel. 
and uh, and Brittany and Sterling. Uh, be in prayer for uh, all of those who are hurting, all of those who are lost, all of those who are uh, who are lacking at this time. Uh, be in prayer for the church. Be in prayer not just for our church, but the church. Um, let's pray that we start to get our act together and we start to move the way that the Lord wants us to move. Um, also, uh, be in prayer for uh, for the men of 180. I, I ask that because uh, um, they're, they're truly starting to make some great strides. Um, be in prayer for our family. Be in prayer for little Sadie. And uh, just know that we're in prayer for each and every one of y'all. Uh, you know, God knows the need. Uh, we pray for you daily, and we love each and every one of you. Uh, let's close out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. We thank you again for this opportunity to come and to study your holy word, Lord. May we truly be set apart. May we truly be holy, Lord. Lord, the things that we cling to, the things that are of the world, may we set them down and move into your grace and move into your mercy, Lord. Lord, you have provided the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, to atone for these things that we do, these things that we cling to, Lord. But if we want to truly be atoned and we want to truly be washed clean, we must let go, Lord. Allow us to have the strength to do so, Lord, and give us the faith to, to know that you have something better for us, Lord. Lord, you are amazing and you are perfect and your, your evidence is all around us. You are undeniable if we are paying attention, Lord. Your creation is magnificent, Lord, and allow us as a people to expose you to, to a new generation, Lord. Allow us to share you each and every turn, Lord, and allow us to worship you properly, Lord. We send these prayer requests to you knowing that you will receive them and knowing that you will deal with them according to your will and that your will is more than sufficient. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. God bless y'all, and uh, if I could get an amen... Amen, Dora. Amen, Joey. Amen, Craig. We love y'all. God bless y'all. Y'all have a wonderful evening and a wonderful remainder of the week.